All right, this is a geeky but fun lab. I installed two Windows 2016 servers in AWS. Nothing really special. Default VPC, no fancy settings. Node 1, Node 2, I installed Wireshark on it. 20-bit Class B network. I wanted to see what happens when the mapping service intercepts ARP requests. We know that the in AWS's network and their SDN, there is no layer two. All layer two gets encapsulated. Anything that's not like an ARP request basically gets dropped. So if no one and no if no one pings no two, and you're going to go through that ARP process, but the ARP isn't answered by Node 2 directly. What does that really look like from a wire capture perspective? This is that lab. I, I have fun doing it. I hope you enjoy, enjoy it. You might have to watch it a couple of times because it's a little heady. Packet capture is not the funnest activity, but watching it in action is, is actually quite amazing. Let's first sort by protocol. By clicking on the protocol button, we can sort by alphabetically by protocol. So we're looking at all ARP requests. The first ARP request we're going to look at is the one that catches our eye, which is the broadcast. In AWS, there's no broadcast. So what's the catch exactly? Well, let's examine. And the broadcast request, we're asking who has 172.31.40.200 tail 172.31.42.77, I'm sorry. So note one is asking the question, who has note two? Just to validate that, let's take a look at the source MAC address and that the source MAC address matches up with our actual host that we're on on note one. So our physical address is do match host one or node one is seeing its own broadcast. Just for a sanity check, let's sort by destination and make sure there's no other broadcast in the destination field. Hmm, okay, so that's just a single broadcast. Now let's switch over to node two and see what we can find out. All right, so node two, we've done the same thing. We filtered by protocol and we see all the ARP requests and the single broadcast address that we see or broadcast packet that we see is who has 172.31.42 till node two. So node two is asking the question, where's node one? Single broadcast address is being sent and just the same on node one, we didn't see the broadcast from node two asking for node one, but yet the two nodes were able to communicate. Let's take a look at the next set of ARP replies. Node one never got the ARP request. The messaging service or the mapping service rather has answered the ARP request on behalf of node one. How do we know that? Because we're getting the ARP reply. We sent out the request of who is 172.31.42.77. Please tell 172.31.40.200 host or node two. We got an answer that 172.31.42.77 is at a physical address. And the source and destination looks right, but we never saw that traffic on Note 1. Note 1 didn't originate the response because the mapping service originated the response. This isn't exactly how AWS explained it. At least this is not how I got it. This is why we do these experiments or these labs to actually see how this works so that when it's not working or we have a OS misbehaving or application misbehaving, we understand exactly what's happening at the packet level. The mapping service will intercept all broadcasts and then answer those ARP requests on behalf of the target system. It is a really well-run and well-scalable solution. As you can see, there's no changes to the actual OS 
ARP works as expected. All of your security and networking tools should work as anticipated. I highly recommend that you do variations of this lab. It was extremely fun. I hope you enjoyed walking through it. I know it was a little heady, but you know what? This is what networking and deep diving is all about.